This is the magic box that makes it all work. This is the little inverter. I had a box for lathe a few years ago and I'd had that wired to run three phase stone inverter and I was very pleased with it. You do get a full comprehensive set of instructions, you even get a, a DVD showing how to set this up and all the manufacturers literature as well because it's a Mitsubishi inverter but you also get a set of wiring diagrams specifically for this miller machine nice simple easy to follow all the wires come with pre prepared ends nice decent quality flexible cables so we'll go about wiring it up Take the tools, remove the, remove the cover, pull the cover clips off like that, put that somewhere safe, and this bottom cover comes off, that's where your main 240 volt power in goes live and neutral in your motor, your three phases of your motor, in your two worths. These are all the little terminals for the control pendant. They're labelled, they're colour coded, you can't really go wrong. When you wire it up, take your time, do it right, do it once. Right, I'm going to do the mains cable first. And if you're not sure about this, you can always get an electrician in to, to do it for you. Aye, which is brown. It goes underneath there. Neutral, which is blue. And the earth, which goes under there. So that's the power into the inverter. Just it will be when I get that tightened up. Next we've got the, the three phases for the motor. All the wires are black. If when you get it together the motor's run the wrong way, you simply reverse any two of those and that'll change the direction of rotation of the motor that works for any three phase motor That's a three way out to the motor. Okay, so that's a 240 volt side of it all the way out up. Make sure the screws are nicely nipped up. So we've got live, neutral, motor, and two earths. Top of there. I don't need this sticker because it's, all, it's got root in there what they are anyway. Right, now we need to put in the control leads. Let's clip the plastic cover back on there because we're, we're finished inside there now. Clips through them like that. There's the wires from the pendant, obviously all colour coded. You look at the instructions, we'll go from the top, 
the white wire that's the white wire goes into the port called PC PC is that one there so all you do you press down on the little orange tag that opens the port up and the wire simply pushes in like that and that's it held in firmly the wires are all nicely sealed that so they go in and they stay in we'll work our way down next one's violet violet's like a purpley colour and that goes into port RL I'm just going to get some better glasses right that's better right so violet port RL which is that one couldn't be simpler right the next one is brown and it goes into port RM so we've got the brown wire port RM which is that one just like that blue goes into STR STR Right, we'll put all the covers back on, except the bell guard. Power it up. It's part of the inverter. We'll put the speed controller well down, we're in forward. Start up, run the right way as well. And what I said, you just change two of the blacks to reverse it. And I've got the lathe, this is it. I've got the miller machine in like a middle gear. You turn this up, and that's your, that's your motor's normal revs, 50 hertz, but you can give it a little bit more to get some more speed out of it. This is set up in the factory. I must admit it's a lot quieter than the, the single phase motor, a lot smoother. Try reverse. Nice smooth start as well. I'm tempted to grab that and see how much torque it's got. I'm not going to. I know it'll have plenty. Stop. There's a jog function, which will be handy for when you're tapping holes for when you're taps in and out. So if you're winding the tap in, you could keep the button down. It will wind the tap in stop as soon as you let go and then reverse wind it back out which is something I've always wanted to do on this machine I've always wanted to be able to reverse it just as quiet a reverse as it is going forward the belts are doing nice and true It's going to make a massive difference to to this machine, and I do use it a lot. Very happy. I need to say where to mount the control pendant. The on-off switch used to be up there. I've got used to it being up there because it's out of harm's way. It's away from any white water coolant I use. I've seen the mounted down there, I don't like it down there because you're putting your hand next to cutters and chucks when it's running. So I think I'll make a nice aluminium bracket and mount it up there. The inverter will be going to go on the wall behind the mill. All the cables will be tidied up nice and neatly. This is going to be kept away from dust as much as possible obviously and you certainly don't want any cooling water on there. So it'll be mounted on the wall behind the mill. So basically that's less than an hour to put it on and wire it up and that's including filming it. It's a very straightforward, simple install and I'm really happy with it. It's 
thrust on it shakes, it's definitely a lot smoother. It means you can be drilling a hole or using a cutter, and if you're not getting the finish you want, you can ease the speed up or down to, to suit. I mounted the inverter up on the wall so it's well away from any swarf and especially away from any cooling water. I had a scrap aluminium jig plate, I've just mounted it onto that. And I've mounted the control pendant up where the on off switch was. It's quite high up in the air and this mill's also got a, a riser block on it but I am tall and I like it up there. It means your hands are well away from whatever you're working on, nice and safe. Works great. I'm just going to do what's easiest for the first time in anger, so to speak. <laughs> 